coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. He was a young man with a plan. Initially, I thought it would take about three to four years, and it ended up taking 40. A 57 Olds that looks showroom new for a very good reason. Can't do much to these cars to make them look any better. <laughs> and let's see, West Virginia, a storm, a barn, and a Chevy. The next morning I woke up, I had chickens and hay and all over us. Plus. After you get it painted and you get the panels on somewhat aligned, you got to come back in and put your weather stripping on. We talk weather stripping in Under the Hood. Quick, name this car. Flavors of all kinds of cars in here. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps in my fire engine red Mercury Cougar. Most Cougar aficionados will tell you that the Cougar was an absolutely great design until it was changed after the 1973 model year. My Cougar's a 1976. I like it anyway, even though my wife really doesn't. We're heading to a couple of cruise ins that we've heard are absolutely fabulous in the greater Cleveland area. One is at the Independence Historical Society. They put on a terrific car show and ice cream social. Always a plus. But first, a visit to the Southwest Cafe, where a couple of nights a week, they put on a pretty terrific cruise in. Cole and Janice, when the Beach Boys were singing about a little deuce coupe, your car is what inspired them, correct? Correct. Not bad. What was it about the car that made you think, yeah? Well, I'd seen it at a few different shows, and we visited and talked and that, but I uh, hadn't come to any decision on whether it was going to be up for sale or not. And uh, at the time I got it, it wasn't up for sale. I just happened to catch him at the right moment. Janice, what do you think about it? I love it. It's my when I, favorite. When I told you, what'd you say? I jumped up in the air. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I said, no, you didn't. You said, yes, I did. How's this thing ride, you guys? Oh, it's very nice. Uh, I accidentally was doing like 90 on 271. Ex and I thought ex I, accidentally? I thought I was doing 70, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's that smooth. You know, the accidentally part's not going to work with the highway patrol. I know. When I looked down, I brought it right back down to 70. <laughs> what have you done to it since you've had it, Cole? Uh, just uh, minor things. Uh, I haven't had to do too much to the car. I just changed the fuel, fuel line around a little bit and uh, carburation. I tuned it and I did some electrical work because I was getting some high resistance and heat. Uh, build up, so that's all been corrected. So. What's under the hood? Uh, it's a small uh, five liter Chevy, four barrel. Uh, they call them a 305. And that's a temporary situation because I build motors, so I'll probably be putting about a 383 in it, small block. As, as a guy who has done a lot of cars, has a lot of cars, likes cars, this one obviously is something special to you. Yeah, it, it had the right look. When you think of hot rod, you think 32 deuce. Think of American graffiti. That's what I yeah. think of. Oh. And there it is. Yeah. Dave, I have to be real honest. You look around this lot, you see Camaros, Mustangs, some really sporty cars. I don't picture a 34-year-old guy with a 47 Chevy Fleetmaster. <laughs> What's the deal, sir? I was always in love with the 40s. My grandfather uh, fought in World War II. I just, for some reason, liked that era. I always wanted a, you know, a 40s car, and I came across this one, and without a doubt, I just bought it right there. I found it on the east side on my way to work. Uh, I passed it a few times, you know. Kept going back, kept looking at it, kept going back, kept looking at it. Finally, I stopped in and looked at it, and guy came up, you know, told me the price, and so I was like, okay, so I left, but the next day I went back up there and told him, you know, hey, can I put it up on a lift to take a look at it, and then I went up there and bought it from him. What kind of shape is it in? Oh, it's in really good shape. I mean, she's solid, you know, she's got a little bit of body work needs to be done on it, but, you know, she drives clean, she's real nice, and, you know, I couldn't expect anything better. Dave, it looks pretty original all the way around. What do you plan to do with it? Uh, I want to put it back to factory original. Uh, when I go back to the original paint color, uh, the motor has been changed out. You know, I like to go back to the 216 with the three on a tree and then redo the interior back to original. But, you know, the, uh, the body itself, the undercarriage and all that's all original. So I don't try to put it back, back to factory original again. So we're going to have a 30-some-year-old guy buzzing around Northeast Ohio in a 47 Fleetmaster that looks stock. Yeah. Nice. I actually like that a lot. What do you think your grandfather would say? Oh, he'd be, he'd be tickled pink. He'd be happy. 
Jim, when you take a look at your Oldsmobile, you see chrome, chrome, more chrome, and some really nice blue paint. I love your car. Thank you. When did this project start for you? Uh, about 2005, I bought the car out of Michigan. With the thought of doing what? Fully restoring it. It was a nice shape to begin with. It was an older restoration. My buddies and I, we took it apart about six months after I bought it, and it took us about close to a year. Fully restored, frame up, interior, paint, chrome. And in fact, it's got the rear J2 setup, which is a tri-power carburetor setup. Uh, Oldsmobile only had that for two years in the 50s, 57, 58, and this car is equipped with it. It's restored original. I'm pretty much a stock person when it comes to restoring a car. Just keep it exactly the way it rolled out of the factory. Can't do much to these cars to make them look any better. <laughs> what were your thoughts on the color scheme? Well, I had one of these years ago, back in the early 80s. I bought, and I regret, regretfully sold it a couple of years later. I always wanted another one, but this is my favorite color. It's definitely a 50s color. Mm -hmm. What was the toughest part of the restoration? Probably the paint and body work and then detailing underneath the hood. The engine compartment's always the most meticulous, time-consuming, because either you gotta do it right or it shows. Yeah. Jim, how long has it been done, finished, driving uh, around? I, we were just talking about that earlier. I think uh, summer of 07 was my first full year of enjoying it. Put about probably two, 3,000 miles on it since then. Gotta have the passion. A lot of work, but a lot of fun when it's done. Well, your 57 Olds has some special 57 license plates on it. Yeah, my father, uh, that's my father, his first name was Leonard. He always had, he tried to get L-E-N, but he couldn't. He had uh, Columbus sent him L-L-N, and he's had that plate since uh, the late 50s. So, put, got them all in the basement, and I dug out the 57 ones and got them painted up and put them on the car. And my dad always was an Oldsmobile man. He, in fact, he bought one of these new back in 57. It was a gray and white. And I vaguely remember it as a kid, but my favorite Olds. Well, you sold one before. Yeah. What are you going to do with this one? No, this, I'm not selling this one. No <laughs> way. This will be around for a long, long time. Trivia time. What do Geneva, Ohio and this 1918 Rio have in common? Geneva was the birthplace of R.E. Olds. It's next on Cruise In, presented by R.K. Motors Charlotte. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work, we do the marketing, we sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Jack, it says Ford on the hat. Right. You tell me it says 1928 Ford on the registration. Right. But more than a few people, myself included, walked by this today and said, what exactly is that? Jack, what did you create here? <laughs> I built a car after I'd spent about 25 years making cars the way somebody else decided they should be built. As a, as a restorer. And when I started making my own, I wanted to have things in it that I always liked. And I like a big vertical grill, but I didn't want it to say Ford. So that's my old company logo for Shade Tree Motor Cars. And that's why no one can tell what it is. Exactly. Nicely done. Thank you achieved your you. goal there. I think so. <laughs> the base of the car is a 1928 Model A Ford. Uh, the frame and the running gear and the bases of the motor are all 28.4. Uh, pretty much everything's been modified at one level or the other. Uh, the front end is stock Model A Ford radiator shell and hood pieces. The body from the, from the firewall on back is the way I thought it ought to be. And there's flavors of all kinds of cars in here. There's some there's some M-Type MG, there's some uh, early Bugatti, uh, dirt track race car, uh, bits and pieces that I'd accumulated over the years or neat things that I bought just because I've always liked them and I put them on. How long did it take to build this car? Uh, duration, about three years. Did you have to create a lot of parts yourself? I had to make a few things, yeah. Uh, windshield frame is totally made up. 
the, the body, of course, it started with a, a bunch of slabs of oak uh, and framed it. Uh, a lot of the frame pieces, the, the stuff I modified on the frame was cut and weld. The interior was, was totally scratch built. Uh, I built the, the seat frames. I bought uh, three cow hides and cut them up and sewed them together. The speedometer usually goes in front of the driver, you know. Uh, with with certain exceptions. Uh, a lot <laughs> oh, nice line. That was good. <laughs> a lot of a lot of British cars in yes. the 20s through the 50s. Uh, the tachometer, which is the one that you really need, yes, is in front of the driver that one on, the can other, hurt you. on the other side. In, in our case, uh, we we set this up as a car to go on tours with, and I don't need the speedometer. My wife does because she's a navigator, so it's on her side of the car. I've got a tack over here, and I've got all the important instruments over here to run the car with, and let her have the speedometer. You know, most guys don't want to hear their wife say, you know, you're going too fast. You asked for it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, your sign says, in December 1966, a young, dumb kid by the name of Dave Masick purchased me for 600 bucks and moved me to Northern Ohio. Well, it's not 1966. You're not young anymore, but you're not old. <laughs> but you couldn't be dumb to do this to this car, Dave. Well, <laughs> what, what a lifelong project. Uh, I appreciate it, and it was a lifelong project. Um, it took me, I, initially I thought it would take about three to four years, and it ended up taking 40. 40. 40 years. Four zero. Four zero. <laughs> and That's how basically old, a lifetime. How old were you when you bought this car? I always think I was 23. 23 years 23 old. 23 years old. And yeah. you went out and you bought a Rio. Yep. What were you thinking as a 23-year-old kid buying a 1918 Rio? Well, I got kind of interested in antique cars, and that was the Cleveland Model T Ford Club at the time. And I knew I didn't want a Ford because Model Ts were relatively easy to restore. And so I wanted a non-Ford, and I wanted pre-1920. And I was getting Hemmings at the time, and uh, a copy came through, and there was a 1918 Rio. And I didn't know what a Rio was, of course. I remember asking my mom, I says, hey mom, what's a Rio? And she says, oh, that was a pretty good car. She says, your grandfather had one, but it was newer than the one you're talking about. <laughs> it was so bad, all the sheet metal had to be stripped off the wood framing. And uh, all the wood framing glued back together and brought to where it was in line with the rest of the frame. And uh, I had all that pretty much done by about, oh, I would say 1980, 85. And then the car kind of sat, 2002, the company I work for says, you're too decrepit, get out of here. Oh, great. So my wife was still working, and I was at the time, I was 58 years old, and she would go to work in the morning, and there was nobody in the house but me, and I had a chance to work on the car all day long with nobody bothering me, and that's really when we finished up the car. So it ended up looking like this just several years ago then? Yes, yes, it was about three, three to four years. Then after I was done with it, I was waiting for a friend of mine Miles Morstetter in Bath, Ohio, to do the top and interior. And he had promised me 25 years ago that he would do it for me. <laughs> and uh, I had to wait two years for him to have time to do it. I, I can't believe that it actually turned out this way. In my wildest dreams, I never ever thought it would turn out. And I, I'm just thrilled to death it turned out like it did. And experts have told you it's the only 1918 Rio Type T touring car in Com existence? Complete car, complete car, because there are several that are just a chassis, just an engine, or a car up to the firewall, and that's it. That, this, this was a very low production year, because one, it was World War I, mm -hmm. and two, this is a relatively slow car. This is, is happy at 25 to 30 miles an hour. Four and cylinders. It, four cylinders. Yep. And at that time, people were, the roads were starting to get a little bit better and people were wanting to go drive faster. So this was the last year for the four cylinder production. After that, it was just a six cylinder, which was a faster car. You told me a story the, about one award that you won the first time out. There was a car show in Geneva, Ohio, and my car wasn't quite done. There was a couple parts that weren't painted, but hardly anybody knew it. But I wanted to go to Geneva because Geneva was the birthplace of REOs. Ransom EOs. Yeah. And my car was parked like this. There was a street, and across the street was the plaque for where REOs was born. It now is a Napa parts store, but it was REOs birthplace. And there were quite a few cars there, and I, I just was thrilled to death to be there. 
And the way it turned out, and I almost get a term high when I think about it, I got a best of show. Wow. And, I mean, I was just... First time out. First time out. I, I just couldn't imagine. You know, I was just so happy. It was unbelievable. I can't really describe it. Well, Dave, you and old Betsy go way back. <laughs> we and, do. and you're both looking pretty good after we all do. these years. I, I still say, I still uh, keep in contact with the uh, family of the original owner. And hopefully this fall, I'm going to have a chance to go down to Atlanta. And they're off of, about two hours out of Atlanta. And I want to see where old Betsy was stored and meet the family that is still around from, from the gentleman. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It could be a minor detail, unless of course your classic doesn't have it. Because that will affect your alignment on doors and everything else. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Today's topic in Under the Hood, the always exciting weather stripping. Adam Gall, master technician here at RK Motors Restoration. Nobody wants to talk about weather stripping, but, but it can play a very vital role. That, yes, yes it can. And, uh, you know, if you ever slam your door and it's got that loose, clunky kind of feel, this is a way to dense in that noise, make it feel tight again. And uh, when you're driving around, you hear that wind noise, it's coming through all the cracks. This is a way to, to uh, stop that, that leakage that you have. Adam, working on a 67 Plymouth GTX here, at what point of the restoration do you want to do weather stripping on a car? Well, after you get it painted and you get the panels on somewhat aligned, you got to come back in and put your weather stripping on because that will affect your alignment on doors and everything else. So here we are, you get weather stripping, you get left side and right side in the same package. So you gotta lay them out, see what side they go to, and then front, backwards, which way. So I know this one fits up here like that. So what we'll do is we'll start from the outside and work our way inside. Sometimes after paint, these holes get clogged up with, with paint. So we have a little round file here and we'll clean them out and that just makes it easier for this little plastic piece here to fit into the hole so you don't struggle as much. And the weather stripping comes with those plastic pieces already in place. Yes, they're already installed on the rubbers. I'm gonna start on one end and work my way out across. And you don't start in the middle because you lose your place and it's just easier this way. And then you just slowly work the rubber into place. Sometimes you gotta muscle them around, but you'll hear the plastic click. That's when you know it's installed. Anything other than the obvious as to why you change the weather stripping, it looks bad, it's all dried out, it's brittle, it's broken up? Well, uh, you know, like with tires or anything rubber, uh, you get dry rot, and it, it'll cause these, the rubber to hang down from the clips, and it won't be a nice tight seal, and that's where you get your wind noise and everything else from. Adam, when you take this stuff off, before you put the new stuff on, as simple as just ripping it out of there? Um, for the most part, yeah, it is. Uh, you have a little pry tool, and usually you can work the backs of these clips. They kind of close and open, mm -hmm. and that helps you take them out. If you can collapse this back edge to it, as you can see here, how it moves. Now here we are up to the top here, into the corner. And this corner here is gonna butt up against this A-pillar here. So that's why it's formed a little bit different. They have these, these push-ins on this particular rubber set, and these go into the holes. On GMs, uh, different brands of cars, they have screws. So I, they work pretty much the same way, just some of the hardware is sometimes different. And that's pretty much installed. And now we, Make sure it can close, everything's in the right spot. 
There we go. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to the Independence Historical Society Car Show on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Marlon, we've been doing this show for two years now. We've heard some great stories as to how people found their vehicles. Yours might be the best ever. How did this Chevy pickup come to be yours? Well, we were in, on vacation in, in 2002 on West Virginia, and we got a big storm, and we got kind of lost in, in the rain. And... So we headed to a little cabin or like cottage and there was an old farmer up in the woods and we stayed overnight there and, and the next morning... You, you just knocked on his door and asked him if he could spend the yeah, night? Yeah, okay. I paid him $20 and we slept in the barn and by my, by my truck bed and the next morning I woke up, I had chickens, <laughs> hay and all over us. I saw this way in the back, this truck there and I got a little bit closer and I asked him if I, uh, if I can buy it, that thing. And first he denied and, and then he agreed with $400 and there I went with $400 to truck. So you pull over, you find just some farmer in West Virginia, you pay the guy 20 bucks to spend the night, you sleep in your truck, you wake up in the morning and this is looking at you. Well, not quite. It's just way in the back of the barn. Brought it home on a tra trailer, it back home and it ran and I just took it apart and restored it, start restoring it. What have you done to it, Marlon? Well, we changed the engine. We rebuilt the engine. We changed the uh, transmission out. For my three-speed on the column, we put a six-speed from an S10 underneath it. We put a 1957 rear end in it from a truck, 12 bolt. Uh, we took the, the drive shaft off. It was an enclosed drive shaft. We, we put an open drive shaft down, custom made. We put a two-barrel carburetor on it, on a, from a single to a two-barrel. It still runs on six volt, but we're continuous working on it every year. Well, you had a vision for this thing because it's not typical. It's got a real unique look to it. Yeah, well, everybody likes black and chrome. <laughs> you know, that's really true, isn't it? <laughs> it just kind of jumps. It just stands out on you. Have you thought about taking this truck back to West Virginia and showing the old guy in the, uh, uh, the barn? I actually thought about it. I don't even know if he lives. And I was hard to find it, believe me, because I don't know where it is. <laughs> Love that story. Found the old Chevy pickup when he had to pull over because of a storm, spend the night in some farmer's barn in West Virginia, slip the guy at 20, sleep in the bed of his old pickup truck. Absolutely love it. Hey, I'm going to pop the old ABBA 8-track into the factory 8-track player here in the 76 Cougar. Maybe hang the mirrored ball just for effect. Be on my way. I'm Jeff Phelps. I'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. <laughs>